Hi Flosstube! Welcome to Flosstube number 10. I'm Stitching Moon here and on Instagram. Um, Megan is my name. And it's my last Flosstube of the year and yeah it's been it's been a fun year starting Flosstube. And what's the date? Uh, December 29th I think? 2021? Yeah, and I have a lot to talk about today, including my plans for 2022, and I have a lot of haul again. <laughs> so if you thought the last video had a lot of haul, this one might rival that one and beat it. <laughs> so I have whips, I have finishes and fully finished objects, FFOs. I have a new start. Uh, I, have, I have a lot. I even have, I want to talk about kind of a system since you know we're coming into the new year and people are trying to work on habits maybe so I have come up with a little system to use cross stitch as a reward for doing some of the things that I want to get better at so maybe if there's time at the end I can talk about that I even have an unboxing for one of my uh, kits that I'll show you from Gecko Rouge that I'll kind of insert within here so we're full I also have some shout outs so yeah, let's get going. <laughs> I'm going to start with whips, actually. So, pull up my pad so I can show you what the finished things will look like. Uh, and this will include two new starts, actually. But first, I'm going to show you one that you're, you've been seeing, which is my Halloween Quaker, because I'm stitching on this every 13th of the month and 31st of the month. So, I've just done one day since you've last seen it on the 13th. Um... Okay, it is still in the hoop. I forgot because it's tiny. Um, but I will show you the f mm -mm -mm, what it will look like at the end. It's by Lila Studio. I'm using the DMC conversion for this, and it's on a 32 count linen. Okay, make sure I have threads still in this. So just want to make sure they don't fall out and it's upside down <laughs> okay so I did I, I was bad at taking pictures of where it was last time so I'm sorry I'm not gonna have many of those this time uh, but yeah here it is now I can tell you where I worked I was working on this I finished this little motif and I didn't know it until I finished it but that's candy corn <laughs> so it's really cute I'm actually one of the people who like candy corn. I know some people hate it, but I actually like really love candy corn. Um, and then I started on the ghost. So, uh, not too much since it was only one day, but I can tell you last time I was, I did 558 stitches since last time. Um, there's currently 17,997 in it altogether, and it's 43. 0.46%. So one more time, there is Halloween Quaker. My goal is to hopefully finish that by next Halloween. So, all right, I'm just going to put these things away as I go. My next whip, actually before I do the new starts, I'll show you the ones that you've seen before. But the rest is like, I just work on many things in the month of December because I was focusing on kind of holiday stuff. Um, but I showed you last time this heirloom tablecloth that was handed to me from my husband's grandmother whose mother did it. So my husband's uh, great grandmother had started this back in 2001, so 20 years ago. And she was 91 when she started and she passed away at 93 so she did had a couple years and then it's kind of been sitting away since then um and it's huge so bear with me um she had done all the border and done the stitching um grid in the middle so the middle was marked with all that stitching and this is what i have done so i finished the deer. Um, when I, I got it from her, she had started a little bit on the snow and then done like the back leg a little bit um, and a little bit up into the body. And then so, yeah, I finished the deer and I thought that was a good stopping place for 
the month and I'm only going to work on this in the month of December so it's going to take a while. Uh, I can't show you the finished what it'll look like because it's only the pattern there's no image of what it'll look like finished but so you'll see it as it comes along in a year. <laughs> yeah that'll probably be the last time you see this um, until next December. So hopefully we stick around. Alright, sorry, this is a big one to fold back up. But this will be going away for the year. So, next, let's do a new start that uh, I wasn't going to start, I wasn't planning on starting, but I was watching Elissa e from E Crafting in Colorado. I'll link her channel below. You should definitely check her out, especially if you like full coverage. And she has some awesome, awesome um, whips. And I really like watching her. She has she has pretty quick progress, so I really like watching her. And she was talking about um, doing a stitch along with uh, this Dimensions kit, Kiss for a Snowman, Dimensions Gold Petite. So it's a little one, and I had this in my stash. And I wasn't sure when I was going to start it, but, um, yeah, when I was like, oh, she's starting it with one other person, I was like, oh, maybe I'll give it a start. So I did. <laughs> and uh, I love it so far. It's, it's really, it's really tiny, but it's so, I really love the details. Um, look how tiny. And it's on 18 count Ada. But look at, like, the shading and, um yeah it's like really really detailed I really like how it's coming out and I keep wondering I'm like is this all gonna fit on this like, like he looks so big especially his hat that's a big hat I don't, yeah I mean he must fit so this is not one that I did this time so it would probably fit <laughs> but yeah I really like that one it's super cute and the little girl reminds me of my daughter even though she's not even two yet but I feel like that could be her in a few years uh, kissing the snowman. So yeah, that was my new start. Another new start I have actually uh, that I was planning on. It's my last whip actually um, since last time, but it is the temperature tree, my first ever temperature chart, and it's the one from Stitching Mommy on Etsy. Um, also has a floss tube, which I'm sure you know, but each branch is a month and then each leaf is a day so I'll be stitching what the high temperature was for that day in a specific color so like the color code for the temperature uh, and I'm yeah I'm excited about it I think I'm also gonna add in um, like snow if it snows like add some white in there somewhere either in I don't know the middle of the leaf or around it something like that I don't know if I'll do rain because it just rains here quite a bit and that might be overkill but I think I'll do snow so I oh I gotta open it first to take it off the hoop I'll try and get better at pictures like taking pictures right after I oh, film this so I'm actually not gonna take it off the hoop because I mean all you're missing is this um, but yeah this is where I am so far I've done the January uh, February March I'm working on the April branch I'm not going to get it done like all the way into, like before I actually have to start putting leaves on but that's okay because I figure I'll probably I'll try to do a leaf every day um, from the day before the temperature of the day before um, and then maybe do like one length of thread for the branch and then hopefully I'll be able to catch up with you know so I'm having the branches done before I need to work on the leaves so that's my plan still have a couple more days to work on it before the new year and I kitted up all the thread I'll need for the different temperatures and on the chart you can actually pick like which climate you're in so there's a different color scheme for or temperature code for cold temperature cold cold climate kind of an in-between and then a hot climate so I definitely picked the cold climate being here in Norway so these are the flosses and I'm hoping I want to do like temperature chart each year so I can just keep the, the flosses and carry them over each year so we'll see oh I also don't know if you saw this needle minder 
<laughs> that I got last video. Oh, yeah. That's a tree I thought was appropriate. Nice fall colors. So, those were all my whips. Now I think I'll go and show you my finishes, my FFOs for the year. So, last time I showed you, I think, just the finishes, not the FFOs, of the two ornaments I was working on for one for my husband, one for my daughter. Um, and I have them fully finished. I got them on the tree for Christmas. So, this is the one for my husband. It's a nice little Home Alone quote. This was a free pattern that uh, I can link again below. And yeah, he liked it. <laughs> and I added the date on the top myself. And then we got the one for my daughter. What does the fox say? And this was an Etsy pattern. Um, and I also added the, the date on the bottom, but yeah, uh, she likes the song or she she's kind of grown out of it maybe now, but she really liked to listen to what does the fox say song and kind of dance to it. So that was a super cute one. So my plan, my thought is to do stitch like an ornament for each of them each year. So eventually we can have a nice little collection going. Um, then the other FFO that I have was a pattern that I won in a giveaway from Mrs. Stitches, who I'll also link below. And it was a little pattern and she also sent the floss that goes with it, which is awesome. And I did make some changes to the pattern, but Yep, it's the Christmas treats pattern. Um, and I think it's, yeah, it's cute. I just, all I did, I mean, it doesn't really look fully finished, but I just laced it on, what I did was I just used a cardboard, but I put felts like between the cardboard and the design so that it wouldn't, you know, cause that's, I don't know, not good for the fabric over time, the card, just regular cardboard. Cause again, I just have a hard time finding like mat board or like the stuff that you're supposed to put on projects like mounting board so I just do it this way and I luckily had a piece that was almost the right size it was the right size this way I just had to cut off a little on the bottom and I think I did it pretty straight um, but I'm not the best with that stuff but you know it's good enough for us to just kind of hang up around Christmas I'm not gonna frame it I'm just gonna um, hang it like from from the lacing like I did with this one back here and just put it away for the year until Christmas comes and then put it out um, but yeah I did make changes um, one by mistake that I actually think turned out pretty well or a couple by mistake um, but this so all yeah these colors um, not the not the chips in the middle but the outside part was supposed to be a much lighter color it was supposed to be I don't know if you can see this, but like in the little gingerbread man, those are stitched actually. The eyes and the dots are actually stitched and it was supposed to be that color for like the background of the cookies and the gingerbread and that would just totally blend. That's the same color as the fabric. So I'm glad I messed up there <laughs> and um, I really think it looks better the way it is now. And the chips were also supposed to be actually the color of what the background is. So. I think it looks more realistic this way. Um, and I accidentally stitched the N in red instead of in the blue, which it was supposed to be. And then some of the colors that she had sent me were not exactly what it called for in um, the pattern, but they are close enough. They work, they work well. So, so that's what I did. And the pattern, I tried to figure out who it was by, but all it says on it is stitching toolkit, stitching toolkit. And I tried to look that up and it, nothing really came up and I couldn't find this actual pattern anywhere so I'm sorry if you're looking for it <laughs> I don't know where you can find it um but yeah uh that those are my finishes so I was pretty pleased about that what next so we did new starts finishes whips haul <laughs> okay yeah I've got a lot because like I said last time, my family from the U.S. came over to visit for Christmas. It was awesome that they could be here for Christmas. That was really fun, and they brought a bunch of suitcases with stuff from the U.S., so of course, of course I had to order stuff for them to bring to me, um, because also during that time was Black Friday, so I was like, and I had birthday money, so I had them bring over quite a bit of stuff for me. Uh, but actually, the first I'll show you is not from them. It was from 
a Norwegian site that was also having a sale back when I had birthday money. And I ordered this with the, another kit that I showed you last time, but it was out of stock, so it just arrived. And this one is by Riolis, and it's a kit, and what is it called? It is called... Oh, okay, it's in another... Based on the painting of Gustav Klimt, but it's the actual name of it is in maybe Russian, so I'm not sure. But it's this painting. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's actually the real painting is like a bigger full full picture. And I think Heaven and Earth Designs actually has it, like the big full one. But and I really like it, but I wasn't I didn't want to stitch a whole like Heaven and Earth design of it. But when I saw this kit, I was like, oh yeah, I like it. Um and again, it reminds me of me and <laughs> my daughter. Um, she has kind of darkish hair, a little darker than mine. Um, yeah, just really sweet. So that will go into my stash as well. Okay, other things uh, that I had her br them bring over. This one I mentioned before. Uh, it is, oh, and all of, I also had my mom bring over these gigantic Ziploc bags, the two gallon ones or two and a half gallon ones, because it, yeah, I can't really find these here in Norway either. And I thought they would be perfect for, um, I actually think I saw it on Facebook, someone in a comment somewhere mentioned they use these for just their kitted projects instead of project bags. And because it's tough for me to get project bags here, I was like, that is brilliant. <laughs> so, and they lay nice and flat. You can see everything in it. So that's what I'm going to be using. But yeah, this one is the Nora Corbett Scorpio pattern because that is my sun sign. So I wanted to do this one first. Um, I do have a video, a floss tube extra of me going over the first six patterns or the first six signs um, and just my, you know, a little bit of astrology talk along with the patterns. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. I do plan on having one for the final six signs once I get all of the patterns but I only have this one for now and yeah I have to put it I have to put it together make some notes about it and stuff but anyway this one I want to start as my new year new start it would have been a nice birthday one but I didn't have all the stuff so ow, I just poked myself in the face <laughs> um but now I have the called for all the called for stuff for it so it was just a I think it was cafe mocha linen And the specialty threads. Um, yeah, kind of a glare. I've never stitched with these, so, and I think, yeah, they're variegated. Are they? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so these are some of the specialty threads that come with it. And just all the regular, the regular DMC. I'm really sorry about that glare, guys. I had to wait to film today. I was like ready really early in the morning. Not even really early, like a normal time of the morning, but the light, it gets, it's still dark in the morning. So I couldn't film for a while. I had to wait. Um, and then I have, I also had to order these specialty threads separate and a couple DMC because they were out on the site from the US that I ordered from, which was one, two, three stitch. So these I ordered from a UK company, Lakeside Needle Crafts. And it's the embellishment pack plus the threads that were out of stock on one, two, three stitch. So maybe I should just take them out. I don't know. They're my first time using beads, even though I have another kit that has beads. I haven't got there yet. Okay. It's still, still glary. <laughs> All right. So I should get a move on because I got a lot to show you. But that is my Scorpio that I plan to start in the new year. All right, so then. Okay, I do have some sto like to talk about like kind of a background of some of these that I got because there weren't what I was planning on. I had to change my plans. <laughs> so for this one, I don't remember if I showed you the pattern for this or not yet, but. This one, Eww. okay, okay, it's really hard to, to, to take out. It's very tight. Okay, so it's by Lindy Stitches, 
and it is a poem or it's from a poem uh, actually I can read about it here <laughs> so it is what's the name of it tread softly there it is right at the top so tread softly and I'm not sure if you can read it but it says but I being poor have only my dreams I've spread my dreams at your feet under your feet tread softly because you tread on my dreams and I just really liked the poem and I like owls um, and I just think it it's really cool looking so yeah I got that um, and I got the PDF pattern but what happened and I also ordered so I'd originally ordered the threads and the called for fabric and had my mom bring it over but when she brought it over it was just in this tiny package and it had the threads right here it has some some specialty threads in there and it also came with the paper pattern and I was like but where's the fabric <laughs> so it never actually they messed up my order so the fabric didn't come with it um so I was really disappointed because ugh, it's just a pain for me to get fabric and I couldn't really find anywhere I could get it that same exact fabric over here I was looking on all the sites that I normally go to so I was like oh man so I emailed her um, and they refunded me like right away with the fabric but I was like well I mean I still wanted the fabric <laughs> because I can't get it here um, but then I would have to wait and I saw it was out of stock on their site anyway and I would have to wait for my family to come back over which I have no idea when that will be or when I go over there so I was like I'll just find another option but I was like I really liked the fabric, like the blue behind it, so I was pretty disappointed. But I did come up with a solution um, that I hope will work. But it, I still have to buy, you know, something else and wait for it. But before I show you the fabric I'm going to use for this, I want to show you one other thing because I'm going to use the fabric that I was going to use for <laughs> something else, which I will show you now. And that would be this the Moonlight Sampler from The Blue Flower. Now this one, let me see if I can take out because it's pretty glary. <laughs> but I just, I just like all these quotes on these things. That's why I get them. <laughs> um, again, it's like they pack these in super tight to the packaging. Jeez. Ugh, okay. So this is the pattern of the Moonlight Sampler. I'm sure you've seen on you know, other people's floss tube. And it's hard to read, but the quote says, Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Uh, so I thought that was an awesome quote. Um, and it's the Moonlight Sampler, and I am stitching moon. I love the moon. So yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get that. And I did have the perfect size fabric for it. It was like perfect. Um, so I was all set to do that. And I'll show you. It's actually the one I showed you last time uh, in my floss tube that I won from Amber's giveaway on Rogue Mama Stitcher. And it's a hand dyed fabric by Rolanda. And it's beautiful. It's 28 count. And at first, you know, when I was getting, before I ordered moonlight sampler I was like yeah this would be it's a perfect size for that it's kind of like a night sky-ish feel so I was really excited but then when I got the floss for moonlight sampler I can pull it out here there's not too much um but I put it up against the fabric and I wasn't quite sold on it <laughs> like it doesn't I don't know if you can tell maybe you think it goes but I just some of them wasn't really I don't know it wasn't really doing it for me I was like eh. maybe the fabrics just kind of too light and bright for it like I don't know I didn't quite like how it matched against the fabric so I was like well I don't know and then when I had the missing fabric from the owl one I was like well maybe I can do tread softly on this instead however it would, it's small for this. Like even with the 28 count, it's charted for a 32. And even if I converted it to a 28, like I wouldn't have to use the entire fabric. And I don't want to waste it. Um, because it's beautiful. I don't want to have to cut it up. So I'm still not sure. 
I'm still not sure. Um, what do you guys think? <laughs> I did find another pattern that would actually look great on this, this, um, this fabric. So I could buy another pattern <laughs> to do for it. But I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, so tell me what you think. If this, if this pattern... See, you know, it's kind of got the bluey thing. I think that would look cool because it's got the stars. Just take out this background and put in this background. <laughs> what do you guys think? But the only concern I have is just that, like, I'd be not using all the fabric. And it's just too nice to, like, not use it all. I don't know. I don't know. Conundrum. <laughs> so I would love you guys' opinion on do you think I should put this tread, tread softly on this fabric and have some extra fabric or should I just do the moonlight sampler on it even though I'm not thrilled about how the colors look on it but it fits perfectly um and it does remind me of kind of a night sky um like a twilighty sky maybe um I don't know if you can I'm terrible at doing this but <laughs> maybe it doesn't look bad in the camera so maybe I could do it and then just get like a new one for the tread softly but I don't know, just something about the green maybe that's throwing me off. The green and the browns. I think it's the green that I don't like against it. The green and the brown. I don't know. The other ones look nice against it. But also maybe if you look at the pattern again, you can let me know. Because it's charted on a pretty dark gray. Would this look good on this fabric? <laughs> Tell me what you think. I'm not good at this stuff. Because the size is perfect. Um, or should I just get something new? I could get a more gray fabric for this that I have access to. Um, and then use this for the tread softly or something totally different. <laughs> Please let me know what you guys think. Okay, enough about that. My dilemma. Uh, yeah, so dramatic. Um, okay, now I have to remember where these things went so I don't mix them all up. Okay. On to my final bit of haul for now. Um, this is just um, fabric, a big gigantic piece of fabric for something I plan to do some Christmas advent calendar for. And it is a Joblin hand dyed 28 count babbling brook. And it's huge. I got this also on one, two, three stitch, I think. Um, and I'm going to use it for the advent animals by Brooks Books. Oh my god, it is huge. It is huge! I got it to put all of the animals on, you know, and make room for if I want to cut them out. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it yet, but this was the called for fabric and I thought it looked really great on this, so I got it. And oh man, it is huge! It's going to take me forever. But I really like the advent animals are free, um, so I'll link those below. But yeah, they're 24 or 25 um cute little christmas animals and yeah my husband and now i guess my family is all big into christmas now so i gotta make some kind of advent calendar but yeah i really like that fabric and i'll learn how to do it i guess as i go along I'm not worried about it because it's gonna take ages <laughs> but yeah so all right i think we're through with haul finally oh my god now, I need some water. Now I can finally talk about plans. 2022 plans. Okay. Where did my... Okay, I'm just losing everything. My notes. I have now my stitching planner I talked about last time. It's a personalized planner that I'm going to mainly use for stitching, but I do have some other things in here that I want to work on throughout the year. And you can personalize it, and it's awesome. Can't wait to, like, really use it when the new year comes. But I also have my floss tube notes in here. So, oh, sorry. One more bit of haul I need to show you guys. And it's also some stitchy kindness. Um, so, I, on Instagram, I've been talking to, back and forth with um, Kaylee. Uh, Rogers is her last name, but on Instagram, it's, I don't know how to pronounce it. So I'm going to link her Instagram below. Um, but she has been making patterns and she has a website called The Sewing Shop, which I'll also link below. And she's in Canada. 
and she really started to get into making cross stitch patterns lately and for Christmas she sent me this really cute pattern on her site that you can see it here you know it just says pattern across it but it's called gnomies and I love those little gnomes they're so cute and it's perfect for like a wintery Christmas Norway stitch so yeah I'll definitely be stitching that I just have to kit it up and I'm thinking I might stitch it for like start it in like Christmas in July so that's my plan for now but thank you so much Kaylee that was so sweet and it's adorable I love it um, definitely go check her out she's awesome she's very um, involved on Instagram and commenting on all, all the posts and everything so yeah go follow her on Instagram check out her store and thank you very much and also works in Pattern Keeper which is awesome Okay, I'm about to do an unboxing for a Gecko Rouge kit that I have not opened yet. I was going to, as you can see here, and then I was like, no, I should do it on film. So, um, yeah, let's just open it up. Oh, and I apologize, I am filming this on my bed because there's no other space available at this moment, so. All right. Okay, so it comes in this nice wrapped package. It's pretty small for a whole kit. Okay. And okay, here's the kit right here. And I know there's some glare here, but it's by Lindy Gaskill, it says. And it says on here, she wanted the rainbow, so she put up with the rain. Oh, sorry, there's so much glare from right by the window. But that's, yeah, that's the image of what it'll look like. And here's the back, so it's going to be crinkly. <laughs> All wrapped up in a nice little bow. So look at all this floss. Yeah, a sheen again from the window, but it's not a huge kit. It's on 18 count Ada, stitch two over one. And let me see, it probably says the size on here. So on 18 count, it's only gonna be 8.33 by 11.7 inches so not too big and yeah here's the Ada so pretty manageable Ooh, I'm excited and then um, let's see it looks like okay yeah so if you open it up they have the colors the symbols and also it's numbered not with the not with the number of floss but like just so you can look at the pattern I guess um, and it looks like there are one, two, three, four, four of these cards that come with it and then needle right here and let's see I know I did order a matching did I order a matching needle liner or was that I have the PDF digital pattern so this is not the actual pattern here um, just instructions, it looks like. And the floss key. Um, it only looks like there's one page, though, of floss, but there's four pages of... Let me see. I know they're not all the same, so that's odd. I'll have to figure out where the rest of them are. <laughs> I'm sure it's on the... Oh, here they are. Okay, I missed a page. Yeah. So all the four... Um, cards of floss have this little key and yeah so I guess I didn't get the needle minder with this one but yeah this is what it comes with so yeah thanks for watching I'm back okay it did come with a needle minder and I almost threw it away because it was in the bottom of the the bag <laughs> so it comes in this little uh, little pouch 
and it's the matching one. So it's so pretty and cute. Oh, the stupid glare. Okay. So yeah, the matching needle minder. My first matching needle minder. So fun. So finally, we can move on to 2022 plans. Um, so I started really like in the beginning of this year, I was monogamous, monogamous stitcher. What the hell happened? <laughs> Floss tube. Um, yeah, I started watching it earlier in the year and then I made my own. I think my first one was June or July and it's been so much fun and I love, I just love the stitching community, but I only, I've been starting all the new things, trying all the new things. Um, really when I first started stitching on more than one, it was all gifts. I was making gifts for people because when I first got back into cross stitch, I was like, how can I stitch all these for all these at once for all myself? I'm just, where am I going to put them all? So I started making gifts for people and now I'm like, screw it. I'm going to make them all for myself. <laughs> no, I do still have gifts that I want to work on, but I think I'm going to just do like one at a time as I do other things in my rotation. But yeah, for 2022, I'd like the idea of kind of planning out like what you want to do for the year. I, li I like making lists and stuff like that. I don't, I'm not very good at keeping up with them, but I like making them. Uh, and I was going to maybe, I was thinking of doing Whip Go, which is, I'm sure you know what that is, but it was started by Jessie Marie Does Stuff on Floss Tube, and it's a huge thing now, and it's like a bingo board, and everybody, um, you put your own goals on it and stuff. So I was thinking of doing that, um, but I was like, well, I don't know what my goals are, because I don't know what I'm capable of, I don't know what I can do in the time that I have, so... And I do have big things that I want to focus on. Like re I really want to focus on full coverages because I have three big ones that I want to have going. So I kind of thought I'll come up with my own rotation this year and then and kind of keep track of like how much I do, the stitches that I do, what I get done so I can kind of see maybe next year I can do whip go when I know kind of what my goals should be or what I what I'm able to do, what would be like a challenge for me. I really don't even know at this point. So, um, that is, yeah, my plan to make my own. So what is that going to be? <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do, since I have three major full coverages that I want to focus on, uh, I can actually show you what they are. I'm sure you've seen them, but the first one is Together. It's a Heaven and Earth design pattern by Jim Warren. And this is what it looks like. If you've seen some of my other floss tubes, you know that I started this and then it was my first time doing a 25 count and it's over one, but I was just using my Q-snap and stitching with that and I got, I was stitching, like I must have been like, <laughs> like with my neck the whole time stitching because I got like a neck injury and I couldn't stitch for a few days. So I really, I have not touched it since because I didn't have anything to work with it that would like be ergonomic. So actually that's another haul for a birthday present. I got a Lowry stand and it's upstairs where I'm not. So I can't show you now, but eventually I'm sure I will. Um, side tangent for a moment because last time I talked to you, it had been over a month and I still hadn't got it. And that's kind of normal for me. So I didn't think of any, anything of it. It's from England and I'm in Norway. Um, so I finally emailed them after like a month and a half. I'm like, hey, do you have a tracking number for this? So I know where it is and when to expect it. And they're like, oh, we don't have a tracking number for you. So we're going to ship you out one right now. Sorry. <laughs> and I was, so they never actually sent it, even though they said they did. But they were really nice about it. And they said, you know, you can pick one of our accessories for free from our store. And that was actually perfect because I, after I ordered it, I learned that you, if you have like a big a chair with like a big arm, which I do, then you might need an extension on it, which you have to buy separately to make it like in front of you. So you're not like stitching to the side, which I don't need. So I got that as like for free as part of the order. So that was awesome. And it came really fast. Actually, they said it was going to be in a week, but it was a week and a half. So I'm like fine with that. It didn't even, I didn't have to pay any tax on it when it came in. I must've paid it before. So I didn't have to wait or pick it up somewhere, it just came right to my house, which was amazing. So, so I'm happy about that. Um, all right, tangent over. <laughs> so that's one of the full coverages that I want to work on next year if I have a, as a focus. Then I also want to have, which you've seen before, 
Children on the Beach by Mary Cassatt, the artwork by Mary Cassatt, charted by Cross Stitch Collectibles. So that's another one. And then the last one. Oh no, do I not have it up? Oh yes, I do. That I, ha I don't have kitted up yet, but it's on the way to me to be kitted up. And it's San Fran by Artisy. So I like how I have a nice mix of different uh, companies to choose from. So those are the three big ones that I want to focus on in 2022. So I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to also get in my other whips? And I figured out a plan for basically splitting it up into seasons where I do a full coverage focus for each season. So basically for three months, I'll have a focus of one of those. And then in the last season, like starting in October, I'll focus on some of the holiday things because I like Halloween stitching a lot. I have to do some Christmas stitching. So I figured like, and then November is my birthday month. So maybe that's like a whatever month, but that breaks up nicely. So the first uh, season, like January through March, I'm going to focus on the together. Uh, then in April to what July, I'm going to work no, to June <laughs> through June, right? Yeah, April, May, June through June, I'm going to work on children on the, no, sorry, San Fran, if it gets here <laughs> by then, I'll work on San Fran. And then finally in the summer, from July through September, I'll work on children on the beach. Um, and I think that kind of matches a little bit with the seasons where it's like, the first one's kind of dark, so it's like a wintry one. And then the San Fran has like a lot of flowers, so it's kind of spring. And then the children on the beach is summer, so... Yeah, I liked how that worked. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is, while that's my focus piece, I'm going to work on it every other day for those three months. Uh, on the, I think on the odd month, on the odd days is what I decided. On the odd days, I'll work on those, except for the 13th and 31st is Halloween Quaker still. So that will be the odd days. Then on the even days of the month, I will spin my whip wheel for all the other things that I have going. So it'll be like a random surprise plus planned. So I like that mix where it's like, okay, I have a focus and it's planned, but I also have some randomness in there and some fun. So I thought that was going to be a good combination and we'll see how it goes. Um, when I'm not having a full coverage as a focus piece, I'll still put the other ones into my whip wheel. So they still could come up like throughout the year. And then in October, starting then, I think I'm going to do like Halloween focus alternating with my whips. Um, I'll have a birthday start in my in November, obviously. I don't know yet what I'm going to do in November, and then December will be Christmas just like this year. Uh, and I also have a lot of new starts planned. <laughs> As you've seen, all my haul, I need to get started on a lot of those. So I'm going to have a lot of whips by the end of the year, by the end of 2022. I thought about doing whip parade for 2021, but I mean, I don't really have that many. And you've seen them pretty recently, so I think I'm going to wait on that and maybe do one, I don't know, either the middle of the year or the end of next year. Um, but yeah, that's my plans uh, for 2022, which I'm really excited about. I am like can't wait for January because I want to get started on my full coverages again and see how the stand, the Lowry stand works for that. Um, I'm not going to go through all the starts that I've planned or anything. Those will be a surprise as they come up. And... Uh, let's see. I want to just talk quickly about, because someone asked me, um, or actually, yeah, uh, about how I should use, or how I'm going to use cross stitch as a reward for, um, things that I want to get done for, <laughs> like, other things, like, not stitching related that, you know, I just want to work on just personally. Um, it was actually Ashley from Yas Stitch who you should definitely go check out. His last video was awesome. He had an amazing Christmas song that he like changed for the stitching community at the end. So definitely go check him out. But he was like, oh yeah, I'd like to hear what you want to do for like how to use stitching as a reward, especially because New Year's resolutions are coming up. So I thought I'd talk just quickly about that. Um, and if you're not interested in that, then bye. I'll see you in the next, in 2022. Um, but yeah, so... Basically, the things that I want to work on, there's a few things. Um, the things that I've started and worked out a plan, a reward plan for so far is cleaning better, <laughs> housekeeping better, because 
with a toddler it's really tough to keep things clean plus I'd rather stitch so it gets kind of pushed back but you know that is something I want to keep on top of more so I planned out and I should have shown a picture but I basically have a whiteboard a big whiteboard and I cut it into fourths and I have things that I want to do daily like listed on one quarter I have things I want to do weekly listed in another section and then I have things I want to do monthly and things I want to do seasonally and that sounds like a lot but I didn't come up with it or I, I uh, we adapted it to my own needs but a while ago I found it like a, I can try and link it below but it's just like a little um, graphic for like keeping your house clean and it has it broken down into those sections so I kind of used that and just adapted it to my own my own needs but that's where I got that and I like lists so you know <laughs> and I have a checkbox next to each of the the things on the list so I just check them off as I go which kind of makes it feel like you're getting progress but for the weekly monthly and seasonal things I decided to have a reward for to help me like stay motivated to do them and it's been working I haven't always completed them but it has been working like things I would otherwise put off I'm like oh but I'm almost there I can get like this thing and what it is I decided you can obviously decide anything you want but things that I wouldn't normally maybe get because I do buy cross stitch things obviously but things that I might not normally get so if for the weekly things because it's every week I didn't want it to be something so expensive so I decided like a skein of floss that isn't necessarily for a project but I can maybe start you know working on my DMC collection so I I went through and like listed all the things that I had and then working in order, I'd be like, okay, I don't have this one, like number, I don't know, eight. So that's what I can get at the end of the week if I do all my chores. <laughs> so each week I can get, you know, a skein of floss that I wouldn't normally get and just add to my stash. Now, if I do the monthly things, at the end of the month, I can choose one pattern, a digital pattern. So wait for a sale because most things have sales, like monthly, you can find something. So especially the heaven and earth, I have a huge wish, wish list there. So I figured, you know, that's something because I have so many patterns and things to work on, I wouldn't normally just get, but as a reward, why not? <laughs> so monthly things, I will get that. And then the seasonal things, those are pretty hard to accomplish because I have a lot on there, like, especially with organizing and decluttering, like the whole house or apartment. So if I do those, I can choose between kidding up a new project or a project bag. So again, things I'm necessar I wouldn't necessarily do each season, but it's something to look forward to. And if I complete all my things, I can get that as a reward. So I'm excited about that. Um, but I do have other things that I want to work on too, and I'm not sure how I'm going to reward, use my reward system on that yet. Although I do have one, I think. There's, I do want to get better with some of my eating habits and I like to add things in. I don't like to take things away. So <laughs> I'm adding in health, a healthy food or a healthy category of food each month and going slow because, you know, if you try and do everything at once, it doesn't stick. So I'm actually using, I can link this below if anyone's interested, but it's a daily dozen list and that's perfect because 12 months in the year, 12 food habits or healthy habits that you can add in um and it is by um a doctor who's a vegan I'm not going vegan I'm still adding I'm still keeping all the foods I eat I'm just adding in the healthy habits that are there and they're all backed by science and everything um and evidence-based so I actually already started in December because I just didn't want to wait for the new year so all of December I've been getting in half a cup of berries every day um, and that's been fun, easy, and I figured for each week that I complete a habit, I can get another skein of floss, why not? But I haven't quite figured that out because it's obviously going to get harder as the months go on because you're going to have more and more habits in there. <laughs> so we'll figure that out as I go, but other things that I want to do are get more, get better at meditating, so that's another thing that I usually start and then like stop after a couple weeks, <laughs> especially because now stitching but we'll see now I think that's enough of that <laughs> no one wants to hear about all my habits but that's just my system that I'll use and yeah maybe something like that will help you as well
yeah, thank you guys for watching and have an awesome new year. I hope you had a great holiday and I'll see you in 2022. Bye.